Welcome to iLecture Online, and here's another example of how to work problems dealing with electric field. This time we're going to look at something a little bit more complicated. We have multiple charges, not in a straight line, so this is a two-dimensional problem. Let's take a look at this problem. It says here that we have a 12 microcoulomb charge that is placed at the origin. We have a second minus 8 microcoulomb charge placed 1 meter to the right. And then we have a third 6 microcoulomb charge that is placed 1 meter above the first charge. And what is the electric field at a location where x equals 1 meter, y equals 1 meter? So let's draw a diagram of that using xy plane to get a feel of what this problem is all about. So there's our y-axis, <clears throat> there's our x-axis. Uh, let's place our charges. We have a 12 microcoulomb charge right here. It's a positive charge. So we go q1 equals 12 microcoulombs. We have a second charge placed to the right, <clears throat> right here. That's a negative charge. That's at a distance of one meter. And call this Q2, and that's equal to minus eight microcoulombs. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we have a third charge, which is placed directly above the first charge, one meter above. That's going to be another positive charge. And that's Q3, and that's equal to six microcoulombs. All right, now we want to put, find the location of interest, which is, if we complete the square here, it looks like it's right at this location. We want to know what the electric field is at this location. All right, due to the presence of those three charges. Okay, where do we start? That's always the difficult part. And if you're at this point uh, wondering where to begin, Always grab a different color pen and draw the electric fields graphically at this location due to the presence of these other three charges. That way you get started, you get more of a visual, more of a visual picture of what this problem is all about. Remember that for positive charges, the electric fields uh, are in a direction away from the charge. For negative charges, the electric fields are in a direction towards the negative charge. And here, that's again, that's away from the positive charge. So that sometimes helps determine uh, what the electric field direction will be at any place on this plane. So now we look at this location right here. We go one charge at a time. I guess I will go this direction. For the first charge, being a positive, what's electric field direction over here due to this charge? <clears throat> and um, it looks like it should emanate in this direction. So diagonally straight across the electric field should be like this. So this would be E1, the electric field due to charge one. Now we go to charge two. Fields are in a direction towards the charge, so E2 should be down this way. Call this E2. And then finally, due to this charge right here, the field will emanate away from this, so the E3 would be in this direction. All right, so now we've identified the three electric fields caused by the three charges uh, from at this particular location. And now, of course, to find the net electric field, we need to do a vector sum of those three electric fields. Now, of course, with vectors, if we do a vector sum, we need to find the x and y components of each uh, vector. And of course, before we do that, we need to find the magnitudes of each vector. So let's start now. The next step is find the magnitude of each of those three vectors. So E1 is equal to, and again, since it's a magnitude, uh, let's draw some absolute values around it. We only care about positive values here because we just want to know the magnitude. So it's equal to K times Q1 over the distance from Q1 squared. Plug it in the numbers. This is 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons meters squared per coulomb squared times Q1. Q1 is 12 microcoulombs, which is 12 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, divided by the distance squared. Now notice that this is the diagonal of a square that's 1 meter by 1 meter, uh, which means that this is uh, the square root of 2. The distance across would be the square root of 2 meters. And then we have to take the square root of 2 meters and square that, which of course is equal to 2 meters squared. All right, grabbing our calculator. I got one right here. Let's see here, 9e to the 9th times 12 exponent 6 minus equals, and then divide that by 
the square root of 2 squared, that's divided by 2, and I get 54,000 newtons per coulomb. So that's the magnitude of the electric field at this location due to this charge right here. And of course, we already know that the direction is outward, but right now we don't worry about that. Second magnitude, the magnitude of E2 due to the presence of Q2, so that's K, Q2 divided by the distance from uh, Q2 squared. <clears throat> that's equal to, plug in the numbers, 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons meter squared per coulomb squared. Multiply the times. Now, even though there's a negative charge, oh, I'm dealing with this charge right here, negative charge, we just put in the positive 8 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, because we only care about the magnitude, all divided by the distance squared, and here the distance from there to there is 1 meter, so that's 1 meter squared. All right, using our calculator, what is that equal to? <clears throat> um, hmm, hmm. I don't even need a calculator. Basically, what I have there, if you punch things out, it looks like this would be 72,000 newtons per coulomb, because 8 times 9 is 72, so that looks like 72,000 uh, 10 to the minus, uh, 10 to the 9th and 10 to the minus 6 is equal to 10 to the 3rd, so the three zeros. So, there we have the magnitude of E2. Uh, we need the magnitude of E3, and since I'm out of room down here, I'll plug, put it in right there. So, E3 <clears throat> is equal to K, Q3 divided by R sub 3 squared. Again, R sub 3 would be the distance between Q3 and the point of location right here that we're interested in. And this is one meter, so Q R3 would be one meter. Plug it in the numbers. This is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons meter squared per coulomb squared. Multiply that times the size of Q3, and Q3 is 6 microcoulombs. 6 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. And the whole thing divided by 1 meter squared, because the distance is 1 meter. All right. And 6 times 9 is 54, so this would be 54,000 newtons per coulomb. So now we have the magnitudes of all three electric fields at this location due to the presence of these three charges. So now we have to go ahead and add those together. But of course, we cannot add them together algebraically. We have to add them together vectorially. That means we need to find the x and y components of each of the three vectors. Now notice that E2 is already only in the y direction. E3 is only in the x direction. But E1, we're going to have to find both the x and the y components. Looking for something with a slightly different color here. Let me try brown, see if that works. So I'm trying to find E1 in the y direction, and I'm trying to find E1 in the x direction. There we go. Those are the two components, the x and y components of E1. To do that, I'm going to need to know what this angle is. I need to know this angle here, theta. And of course, since this is a, a rect, uh, not a rectangle, but a square, it's, it's indeed a rectangle, but it's a special rectangle. It's a square. All sides are the same. That means the angle here must be 45 degrees. Makes it a little bit easier. So knowing the magnitude of E1, we can now find the magnitude of those components. So E1 in the x direction is equal to E1 times the cosine of the angle theta. Uh, the magnitude of E1 is 54,000 newtons per coulomb. We multiply that times the cosine of 45 degrees, which is 0 0.707. What does that give us in terms of the magnitude of E1 in the x direction? Okay, that's 38,000, I'm just going to round it off to 38,000 newtons per coulomb. And since the angle here is 45 degrees, that means the sine of 45 degrees is also uh, 0.707, so we can then write that E1 in the y direction is equal to E1 times the sine of theta, or this is equal to 54,000 newtons per coulomb times the sine of 45 degrees which is also 38,000 newtons per coulomb. All right, we're now ready to start adding these vectors um, one direction at a time. 
So we're now going to find the x coordinate or the x component of the total electric field. So E total in the x direction is going to be the sum of all the x components. Now let's find all the x components. Uh, we have an E1 in the x direction right there, so that's one component, and we have E3. So E total in the x direction is going to be E1 in the x direction plus E3, because the entire E3 is in the x direction. Plug it in the numbers. This is equal to 38,000 newtons per coulomb in the x direction. And E3, uh, where's E3? It's right here. That's 54,000 newtons per coulomb. So plus 54,000 newtons per coulomb. And that is, <clears throat> hmm, wow, I just noticed the magnitude of E1 and E3 are the same. That just happened to be by chance. I just want to make sure I was doing this right. Okay, Newton per coulomb. And that's also in the x direction. They're both positive because they both point to the right. So that means that E total in the x direction is, that's 80, that's 92,000 Newtons per coulomb. And that's in the x direction. All right, so we now found the x component of the total electric field at that location. I now want to find the y component. E total in the y direction, and that's equal to E, well, let's see here, what do we have? We'll have the E1 in the y direction, uh, that's the component in the y direction, which is positive, and then we have E2, which is negative. So that means we add E1y plus E2. Of course, remember that E2 will be directed downward, that'll be a negative quantity. So this is equal to E1y, which is right here, that's 38,000 newtons per coulomb in the positive y direction because it's pointing upward and then minus E2 E2 is right here 72,000 newtons per coulomb and it's pointing downward so 72,000 newtons per coulomb in the y direction this makes it the negative y direction and then that means the difference between those two is 34,000 so that's a minus 34,000 newtons per coulomb in the y direction. So this indicates it's a negative component. All right, so far so good. We have now found the x and the y components of the total electric field. Now, of course, if we want to write this as a single vector quantity, E total is therefore equal to the sum of the two components. So that would be 92,000 newtons per coulomb in the x direction minus 34,000 newtons per coulomb in the y direction. So this is the electric field at the given location due to the presence of these three charges. If you now want to find the magnitude of that, to find the magnitude of the total electric field strength, that would be written like that, right? We put absolute values around it to indicate the magnitude that is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. That would be E total in the x direction squared plus E total in the y direction squared. And make it a little shorter here. So that's equal to the square root of, I now take the two components, they're right here. So I take 92,000 newtons per coulomb quantity squared plus a minus 34,000 newtons per coulomb quantity squared. And if I Plug that into the calculator, so 92,000 we squared out plus 34,000 we squared out, doesn't matter if it's negative because we're squaring it anyway, we add those two together, we take the square root and it looks like the total would be 98,000, round it off, 98,000 newtons per coulomb. So that's the magnitude of the electric field at the desired location. If you now want to know the direction of that, and let's at least put the components down here. Let's try that out. So the final electric field has a positive component in the x direction of 92,000 newtons per coulomb. So that would be this vector right here. So this would be E total in the x direction. And then we have a component in the y direction that's a minus 34,000. That would be this way, like here. So this would be E total in the y direction. So these are the x and y components of the total or sum of the uh, vectors. And then if we want to combine that, 
This would be then the vector representing the total electric field at that location due to the presence of these three charges. So the magnitude of this would be 98,000 newtons per coulomb. And then the angle, let's call it the angle phi, relative to the positive x-axis can be found by taking the arc tangent. So we can say that phi is equal to the arc tangent of the opposite divided by the adjacent side to that triangle. What I'm saying here is that this is the adjacent side to the angle. This would be the opposite side to the angle. So we take the arc tangent of the opposite divided by the adjacent, we get this particular angle. So in this case, the opposite would be the y component of the total. The y component of the total right here is the 34,000 newtons. So that's the arc tangent of the 34,000 divided by this, the magnitude of the adjacent side, that would be the 92,000. Okay, now for the final answer here, we take 92,000 divided by, oh no, I'm sorry, it's the other way around, 34,000 divided by 92,000. We take the arc tangent of that, and it's 20 degrees. So now finally, we know the full answer. We can either express the answer of the total electric field at that location in vector format like this, or we can do it by finding the magnitude and the direction relative to, in this case, the positive x-axis. So that's how you do one of these problems, finding the electric field to the presence of charges, multiple charges that are not on a straight line, in this case, it's a two-dimensional problem, and you can see that's rather complicated. So let's go ahead and review it real quick. What we did was, initially, we drew a diagram of the situation with the three charges placed in the correct location, and we found the location where we wanted to find the electric field. The next step, then, is to draw vectors representing the electric field due to the presence of each of the charges, one at a time, E1, E2, and E3, remembering that for positive charges, the vector field is away from the charge. For negative charges, the vector is towards the charge. Then we need to add these together vectorially. To do that, we first need to find the magnitudes of the three vectors, which we did. And then we want to find the components, the x and y components of each of the vectors. Now for E2 and E3, since they're already in the x and y direction only, not at an angle, we only have to find the components of E1. We use that equation like that, the cosine and the sine, to indicate the x and the y components of that vector. Once we found the magnitudes of those two components and the magnitudes of the other vectors, we then do a vector sum. E total in the x direction is the vector sum of the x components uh, of all the vectors, and E total in the y is the y components of all the vectors that have y components. You get the magnitudes of the x and the y direction for the total vector, the total electric field, and you can write it here as a vector quantity, or you can find the magnitude of that using Pythagorean theorem right there to find the magnitude of the total vector and then find the angle relative to one of the axes. In this case, we found the angle relative to the positive x-axis. And there's a little summary of how to do a problem like that. Go ahead and give that a try. See if you can duplicate this. And don't get frustrated. Take your time. These can get quite complicated. All right, good luck.